Hi everyone, my name is Sean uh, from Pocket Adventures and I don't know if you've seen some of my videos. I have videos on uh, some of my camping trips that I've done at Algonquin Park in Killarney. I also have done reviews on some of the new items that I have and I have also been doing uh, mapping routes on Avenza. But today I want to go through all of my camping gear on the ground here. So I have all this in my garage floor. I'm going to go through all of it and I'm going to show you what I'm going to bring. I'm not going to bring all this. There's too much here. I mean, it'd be impossible to bring this. But uh, we have a planned trip at the end of May. So that is spring. And that'll be our first time doing an early trip like that. So I'm kind of anxious. And uh, I know it'll be very exciting. But before I go any further, the most important thing that everybody has to do is ugh, subscribe. Please subscribe. It weighs nothing to put this in your backpack. So do that for me before we start and maybe like also. And uh, yeah, that'll help me out. So let's get started. Uh, we'll start with the stuff that's going to be inside of my tent. First, we'll start with the tent. So this is my tent. Um, I think I weighed this the other day and we're looking at probably, I'm going to see about five, six pounds. Uh, probably a little heavier. There's probably lighter tents out there. This is a three-person tent. The reason why we're going to three-person tent, the two was too small. I didn't like it. It was too little tight for me. And plus, we're going to be me and my wife and Yeti. Come here. And we're going to be bringing this guy over here on our trip. So he's going to be a first-timer with us. And then uh, he's going to need a little bit of room. Too. So, okay, you can leave now. You can leave. Uh, inside my tent, we're going to have this here this is a new item that uh, i've done a review on so if you're kind of curious about the uh, rapid sl tent floor um, i will put the link in uh, the description below or somewhere on my page you'll find it but anyways there is a review on this i am nervous about this this is a little bit bigger than our normal uh, floor pads that we've used in the past but combine two of them to this this is lighter but maybe a little bit more space inside the bag. But I think this is going to be a good, a good purchase, and I'm anxious to try this. I think that'll work well. The other thing that I did with that review of that is the flex tail. The flex tail is going to be an awesome little thing. I think I think that's going to work out really good for us. Anxious to use that. So that's going to save us from blowing those that one up all the time. So. The one that we're doing in the spring is going to be, is it two nights? It's just going to be a quick one. We just want to test out uh, Yeti and make sure he's okay with that and uh, in the canoe and make sure he doesn't jump out and get us all frustrated. But I think he'll be a good dog. Uh, so for sleeping bags, we have all kinds of sleeping bags. I kind of, I go crazy in sleeping bags. It seems like I'm buying a new one every year. Uh, I'll start off with the first ones that we ever bought are these ones here. These are our summer ones that we've been using. Uh, these ones are uh, McKinley uh, Plus 5, uh, synthetic, not down. A little heavy and they do take up a little bit of room, but they did the trick for uh, our trips. This one here, we added this one here. So now what we're doing is we're taking one of these, we're adding this one. This one here can compress down a lot more because it's down. And this one here is between minus two and uh, plus five. So this one here is definitely a good one to have, a lot lighter than the big one. Uh, for our fall and spring camping, we had these guys. I mean, they're huge, they're massive, they're synthetic. Um, minus seven, and I think they're about, they're over three pounds. I think they're like three and a half pounds. They are heavy and they take up a lot of room. I can compress them a little more, but not too much more than that. So this is my new stuff. I'm anxious to try this stuff. Out. This is going to be in our uh, spring uh, camping trip in May. Uh, this is the Parsec minus 20. Oh, minus 20. I'm not, it's not going to be that cool. Minus 6. And this is the mech. This is the women's sleeping bag uh, for my wife. So we're going to try that. So these compress. I mean, it, it looks big. Uh, down, you don't want to compress them and leave them and store them in the 
uh, stuff sack, you want to make sure they're in a bag like this so they can uh, make sure the feathers are nice and, what's the word I'm looking for? Fluffy? Yeah, we'll say fluffy. And then we got the little sleeping bag for Yeti. I think he might need something to lay on or cover him with. I'm not too sure yet. We're gonna, it's going to be all new. And I'll go through all this, and if you have any ideas what to do uh, to make it better for Yeti, like bring in a mat or anything like that, please put it in a comment below so I can make it where Yeti is going to have fun and then he can come on our next trips and not have a problem. Uh, so yeah, so we have that. This here, we bought this last year and I thought this was good. I always have a hard time with uh, sleeping, uh, not sleeping pillows, pillows. Uh, it's this one here from Mech, so this is the deluxe pillow. You can get different sizes if you want. So it packs down to that, and then you put a little bit of air in there, and it comes out to that. So I really enjoyed that last year. I think that works well. I mean, it's a bit soft right now, but you can kind of put the amount of air you want in there to make this comfortable. And there's kind of, uh, I guess, memory foam in there, and uh, that works very well. So that's pretty much all the stuff that's going to be inside my tent. Okay, so now we're moving over down to... We got our tent set up, so we're good for that. We got our sleeping bags, our pillows, and all that. So now we're going to move over to protecting our tent with a tarp or just staying out of the rain. So we'll start with that. I have these two tarps. I believe they're both maybe uh, 10 by 8. I think they're both the same. This one here is a little bit heavier. It's a little more heavy duty. And this one here is a light duty one. I have had this one for at least three or four years. I could probably get another ear at it. I think it's going to be okay for that. But I like to bring two because I like to have one over my tent. And again, just to stay a dry spot by the fireplace if there's a big storm and stuff like that. You know, you never know. Actually, I went one time and I had both of these. It was perfect because there was like 100 mils of rain. And uh, yeah, so it gave us that st spot where we're right at the rain. So have that rope. So now if you have tarps, you need a rope. I'm a little bit crazy on a rope. I bring a lot of rope. I think I bring too much rope. I mean, this probably weighs a good three or four pounds. I think I might go through it. I might take a chance and kind of go and make it a little lighter, but I like my rope. So we'll have to maybe go through that. So as you can see, I got lots. So that's that. Uh, so now we'll move over to the, the biggest problem that everybody has when they go camping. Uh, especially if they go in June. June is the worst month for uh, mosquito, black flies, and all kinds of bugs. Um, so what we've been doing is we've been bringing pick. Uh, it's nice to have. I don't think I'd bring all of this. I'd probably bring a few uh, coils, and I think that would be good. But we tried this. This is the thermal cell MR300. And what you do is you have the little uh, these pads in here. So you turn it on, you put your pad in there, it does a little thing. It makes creates a little bit of smoke. Works really well. It keeps the mosquitoes away. I think it's this is a good recommendation. If you don't like mosquitoes, it doesn't work good on deer flies and horse flies. So unfortunately, uh, my wife definitely knows that because she got eaten alive last year. So and also little butane cartridges. Butane cartridges. Yeah, definitely bring that. <laughs> you don't need that, Yeti. Mine, Yeti. Nice. Thank you, Yeti. So kind. Uh, bear spray, very important, have this, have it close to you, uh, don't, uh, you know, put it in your pack sack at the bottom, you want it to have a quick access, so even if, uh, so once you're setting up your tent, have it close to you, again, have it outside your door, or inside, always have it nearby, and then have these on your, on your bag too, so when you're walking through your portage and stuff like that, or even on, I'm going to have one on Yeti, so when Yeti is going to be walking through the bush, we'll know exactly where he is all the time, and hopefully he'll scare away bears. I did have a horn somewhere, I don't see it, but that's a good idea too. The horn is probably about this size here, and uh, I think that would be a good idea to bring that too. You know, bring them all. You don't want to deal with a bear and have nothing. Moving over, one more. Uh, over here I have the... Uh, hammock straps we used to bring two of these all the time that's a lot of weight to bring uh, so we've kind of cut it down to one hammock and one set of straps 
I think we'll always bring that. I think it's a nice comfort to have uh, when you're at the campground. You know, you've been doing portages all day. Nice thing to have is to have that hammock. Chairs. I never used to bring chairs, but then I saw a lot of other videos where they're bringing chairs and they have that comfort versus sitting on a log or sitting on the ground or sitting on a rock. They have that comfort chair. The problem is what I did, I think I went a little bit too heavy. This is the Helinox uh, Sunset Chair. I mean, I'm still gonna bring it. I think this one here is, I believe it's like three pounds. Um, I hope, I'm definitely gonna bring it. If I do anything, I'm, this is a high chair. That's probably why the weight's in there. And then we have this one here as the low back chair. It's a little lighter. I'll bring this one, but I'm gonna eliminate one of these. I mean, I, I can't bring them all. This one here is another high back chair. I don't think I'm gonna bring this one. But those are the chairs. If anything, I'll bring one, maybe two. I like, I'm trying to minimize the weight as much as I can, but I'll have to fix that somehow. Okay, let's move over into our kitchen supplies or uh, we need for cooking. Um, this little thing here is, I don't have dub in there, it's not that. But this is where we kind of put all our utensils, our clipping stuff and then salt and pepper and we have a little small cutting board in there. So we've tried these last year and uh, they're super light. Um, they do bend easy though, so you can have to be careful with those. And the rag to keep your, uh, to clean your dishes. Um, we bought this knife last year. This one works really well. This is an MSR knife, super light, super sharp. I really like this, it came in handy last year. And uh, I know they have different sizes. I might look at, they have a bigger one with a red handle and maybe a smaller one. So I might add to that, that series there. Uh, kitchen sink. So this is our kitchen sink. This is what it comes in. Uh, this is what it looks like in afterwards. So what you do is you go down to your lake, you take a scoop of your water, you bring it up uh, to somewhere comfortable. You can do your dishes or even wash your hair in it, whatever you want to do. Just don't do your dishes, then wash your hair. Uh, get a fresh bucket of water. Uh, and when you do your dishes, after you're done, don't dump this directly back into the lake. You want to dig yourself a hole away from the lake and dump in your, uh, your dirty water into that hole just to keep the lake nice and clean. So I do like this. I recommend getting one of these. It comes in really handy, especially when you have your campfire and you want to put it out. I mean, you don't have too many options when you go out there, right? You want to kind of fill this with water and then you can dump that onto your campfire. It makes it a lot easier. So I do like this and uh, I do recommend that. Oh, what else we got here? Yeah, we said that. Dishes. This is what we bring. We had the metal ones before. They were a little bit too heavy. So we went with plastic. Uh, these are a lot lighter. I mean, we even tried paper, or not paper, but cardboard, plastic, no, cardboard. And they did work well because you can eat and throw them in the fire. However, it takes up a lot of room. So you can imagine if you're gone for six nights, you got a stack of that. I mean, eventually the stack gets smaller, but I think I just prefer these. Do the dishes, get it over with, and uh, that works well. We also have this. This is our bowl that we're using for cereal, but I think it's going to be transferred over to Yeti, where it's going to be it's his dog bowl. So I think that will be that. And actually, I'll come back to this. When you are doing your dishes, do not use regular soap. There's this stuff here. It's from Sea to Summit, and it's Wilderness Wash. Okay, so you definitely want to use that. It's multi-purpose. You can use this as body wash, shampoo, uh, whatever you want, washing your dishes. So get that stuff right there. It makes everybody happy. Uh, for pots and pans, I have two in here. I will probably not bring both of them. I'll probably, you know what, I don't even might bring one. I don't even know if I ever brought these. But anyways, they're in my pile. I'll go through them. And I'd probably bring the small one, not the big one. If I do bring it, definitely bring this. I always need this. This is my pancake maker. On every trip I made pancakes, handle falls in pretty good. Uh, doesn't take up too much space. So I do like this. And my little kettle for my cup. Do I even use this for my cup? I use it for my tea or hot chocolate. Okay, so we definitely have to bring this <laughs> for the tea and hot chocolate. So there's that. And to warm up our water, we have this guy. This was a good buy. This is the MSR uh, little cook thing, 
and it just sets up so easily. Let's open that up and then it's it easy, but it's taking a little bit. And it's just like that. You put your right on that on top of your, your fuel tank and voila, you're heating up your water in no time. So for the tanks here too, uh, you can buy this little star thing here. Uh, so if you're, you don't have any place with the level ground, you put that on there and it kind of holds it a little bit more sturdy. Um, that was a good little purchase. So you can get that. And what else we got here? Bags, garbage bags. Definitely bring something, some sort of bag. Uh, especially, not all your stuff is going to be able to burn. Uh, I mean, I do see people try a lot of burning their metal and stuff like that metal doesn't burn it does it does but you campfires don't have that kind of heat so throw them in here and uh, bring them back with you and throw them in the garbage when you get back home okay let's move on to water all our little cups here uh, so I have this this is the uh, AeroPress I bought this last year love it makes great coffee uh, it is a little bit big in size, but uh, I'll definitely sacrifice that to have my coffee. I mean, I'd probably even bring, bring, I'd probably bring a coffee machine. But this works good. I do like this. Works really well. There's that. Uh, for filter uh, filtration of water, we have this here. This is the, what is this? I think this is MSR. Yeah, I'll get back to you. I'll put it in there somewhere in the, oh yeah, it is MSR. So this is working really good. We have this, this is a ceramic filter. I've had this for three or four years now. Uh, the filter is still good. So there's a gauge on here that you can take out the filter and uh, check it out and make sure that it's still uh, good to use. I still probably have a few years out of here. So I really like that and it works well. I've tried this one before. This was our first one. I just want to show you this one. This is the life straw and it was okay for the first time so you fill it with water and then you uh, take all the strength that you have remaining in your body and you suck on that and that's how you get your water i just couldn't do it it was just way too much for me to do that so i like that filter i know there's other filters like that you can use pills um there's other types but i do like that one i mean eventually i'll probably change but for now that is the one i'm using in this bag here there's nothing in there. It's empty. Uh, just little things that you should bring. This is a whistle. So, you know, it's good to have that on your life jacket. Uh, tie wraps. You never know what you're going to need that for. And duct tape. I have a little roll of duct tape here. So, you know, you get a hole in your tent uh, or in your tarp or anything else that you need that for. At least you have that. You can definitely use that. And uh, cups. <laughs> You know what? I bought these uh, for Christmas. Two Yetis, his and hers. You can tell which one's which. Um, I like Yeti. As you can tell, I hate my dog. Um, I'm going to try these out. They are a little bit heavy, but you know what? Sacrifice a little bit of weight to have that. Um, we also have the these bottle, Nalgene bottles. Uh, when you buy a Nalgene bottle, they come with a big cap on here, and it's pretty much that size. Um, I like the bottles, but the only thing that was wrong with it is every time you take a sip, you get most of it on your face and less in your mouth. So we decided to buy these little caps here. I do not remember the name of them, but I'll put that in the comments below in the description. And so you can have that. So it's a little smaller, easier to drink when you're canoeing or hiking and uh, less of a mess. You don't want to waste your water on your face. You want to have it in your mouth. Okay. What are we at here? Okay. Okay, so now we'll move over to uh, power supplies, lights, and other things. So over here, I have these two uh, battery packs. So I have this solar one uh, that works uh, pretty good. It's not my favorite one. But it does have the solar option. If I really get stuck, I can use that one to recharge it. Um, but then I also have the BioLite. I like the BioLite one. This one has been working really good. We've used this one last year 
and uh, no issues. The only problem that with these things, they got a little bit of weight to them. And I am missing one. I do have another one, and they are heavy. But if I want to record my trips and share them with you, I have to bring these to make sure my phone is charged, especially one of the trips that we're doing is uh, Gulfwood Park. Uh, and uh, I think we're doing like 75 kilometers, so that's a big trip, and I definitely want to have enough of these. So I have those. Uh, the other option is, maybe some somebody can help me by making a comment, is the solar panels. Is it worth it? Does it work well? Um, can I eliminate, eliminate these? Is it lighter? Um, from some of the research I've done, uh, some of them are pretty heavy, but anyways, if somebody can put a comment below and maybe let me know, if it's worth doing that and then uh, maybe I'll make that switch and also I have our our headlamps those work well those just take a triple eight and then here's my little bag full of batteries and well cards of course everybody needs to bring a game so I have that and I bought these these are also bio light lights this worked really well this is kind of neat I did like these um, Use this, you got your little USB, you plug it in there, you plug that in there, and then, then I got lights for the tent or for the campground. Really cool. I didn't I did like having those. So that worked well. And these are kind of the same thing, a little bit brighter, but I instead of a set of four, I got a set of two. I do like these also. I'm not gonna bring both, I'm gonna decide which I'm gonna bring, I'm not too sure yet. Another purchase that I bought as another bio light, I like bio light, is this little solar light here. So worked really well. You charge it, and then uh, it'll last you probably a few nights. But then you can recharge it again because it's solar. Uh, worked very well. Definitely going to bring that again. So that is all my power supplies. Now over to you know what I probably should have started off maps. But anyways, maps. Definitely bring a map. There's different ones. I mean, if you're going to Algonquin, Killarney. Bring Killarney. <laughs> <laughs> You want to bring this one here. Uh, bring an Algonquin map. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, Jeff maps. Uh, I, I don't think they no longer make maps. I think it's on Lostify now. But you can order that online. Go to Lostify. They do make great maps. And uh, I would definitely pick one up for all the areas that you're going. I think they're still working on the Algonquin one. But hopefully they do eventually come up with that. And that'll be a bonus. The other thing that you can use is a Benza uh, on your phone. Uh, that's what I've been using. Works great. You can have the, all kinds of maps on that and it'll track you. You don't need Wi-Fi or anything like that. and It'll tell you exactly where you are. So I did do a video on that. I will also put that in the link somewhere and you can check that out and maybe that'll help you with mapping your routes. Uh, okay, let's get to the dangerous stuff here. Let's show that one out. So I have two different axes. I love this axe. This axe is awesome. I spent a lot of money for it and I wanted to bring it. I did bring it. It's just too heavy. It's just too heavy. Um, this will be just for different camping, but uh, um, yeah, I really like this one. I'm not going to ever bring it on a canoe trip again, but I will use it. This is the one I use. This is just a garden axe, super small, super light. This is all you need. You don't need nothing fancy like that to chop your kindling. This is what you use. And then I have these two. This is the Boreal 21. I love this thing. This one here just opens up. He loves it so much he bought it twice. Yeah, I bought it twice. It was funny because first camping trip with it, went out with, uh, did a portage. I figured it'd be good for somebody else to have and I left it behind. Uh, so I bought another one. So I have Two of them, just one of them, I don't know where it is. <laughs> so anyways, that's what that is. Cuts really good. If you need to, you can replace the blades when they get dull. Um, I bought the bag. They do not come together. Or maybe they do now. This was two years ago. Uh, maybe you can buy the bag with it. Definitely a good purchase. I do recommend this. And I don't want to cut myself now. I forgot how to do it. So anyways, I got it. And you just put it away. Come sa. All done. Fits in the bag. And then you have this option here too. This was when I first started. I mean, it's not a bad option. You can do this. It's a little lighter than that. But I will definitely always bring that. 
Uh, this one here I will leave at home to cut any branches in my yard. The little knife. I buy one of these every year because I lose one every year. I don't lose it when I'm camping. I lose it when I'm at home and I'm like, I put it away with my camping gear, but I never do. I always put it somewhere else. And this is not the one that I usually have. Well, maybe it is. But anyways, bring a little knife. Nice to have. Uh, one of the things I use the most. First aid kit. Make sure you have one of these. Uh, make sure you have something for blisters, you have your bandages, you have your gauze, you have wraps. Um, allergy pills, Advil. Allergy pills, yeah, perfect. Uh, aspirin, have it in here. I think it's in here. So, uh, not for you, Yeti, you can't have nothing in there. So, yeah, definitely have one of these. I used it a lot. I did cut myself a few times. Uh, rope burn, uh, stuck axe. on a pig. Yeah, I cut myself with an axe. All that good stuff, normal stuff, right? So have one of these, good to have. Gloves, um, this one here is fireproof. Uh, it's good to have one of these. And then, uh, you know, especially when you're cutting wooden sawing, wear your gloves, protect your hands. I mean, avoids you from using that over there. Okay, now we're gonna move over to our backpacks. And I have this barrel over here, a uh, food barrel. And, Yeti's being a pain in the butt, but that's okay. So when we first started, we did the bags. And then I saw all these videos doing with the barrel. And I'm all like, must have a barrel. I did the barrel and I didn't like it. Okay. It's a lot of weight. This here is 10 pounds alone, 11 pounds. Just, just the barrel, right? So I wanted to try something different. So we jumped over to the uh, sea line. 150 liter slog bag this bag is awesome i like it you can fit a lot in it i mean probably 150 liters is pretty big but if you decide to go even on a short trip doesn't mean you have to fill it up you can pull this up all the way down to that right you can turn this 115 liter into probably a 75 liter bag um but i do like this and it saves me from bringing that i really like this so what we do now, we bring this with one backpack. I have two, two backpacks here. I have this one. This one here is mine. This one here is my wife. Uh, she'll probably bring hers. I'll leave mine behind. And what we've been doing also is instead of the cooler bag or the cooler or the cooler bag, the barrel, uh, we've been bringing a cooler bag. Um, this has been working really good. I am going to show you. My wife's going to put everything on with her backpack with this in on her. So what she does, she puts this on the front with her backpack on her back, of course. Uh, I mean, I don't have to show you, but I'll probably show you anyways. And it works very well, right? So we're able to keep our steaks in here. So always on our first night, we always bring steaks. That's, I've watched videos, they bring steaks. It feels like I have to bring steaks now. I love it. And I'll keep on doing that. Um, yeah, so that works well. And I would keep on, I'd recommend doing that instead of bringing that. But that's up to you. Everybody has their different preferences. I mean, a lot of people think, no way, man. I'm sticking with the barrel. I mean, it works good. And plus, if you use the barrel, it kind of gives you a little space for a table, too. So that's totally up to you. But I don't think I'll ever bring that uh, camping with me ever again. Barrel. Uh, let's move over to the little bags here. So now we have our compression bags over here. So this is for a tent or dry bags. So these are our dry bags. We have this. Normally what I do in this, a lot of that stuff over there is going to go into here. I like using these bags for that. Uh, this is for our clothes. All our clothes go in there. We, uh, I think this one's got an air thing on it. Yeah, so we just, you kind of put it all in there. You open up this valve, you pump out the air, and it turns into a small, nice little bag. And I have these two bags here. So again, I bring one of these bags is going to probably have a whole bunch of different stuff in it. The other one is, is going to be for our food when we're hanging up our bag. So it's going to probably be this one here. This one's a little thicker, uh, put all our food in there and then we'll probably hang that with that in a tree. Uh, and that's been working really well. So that's the plan with that and we'll continue doing that. Life jackets. 
wife's life jacket, my life jacket, and Yeti's life jacket. So that's new. We just bought that. And uh, he doesn't like it, but he's going to have to get used to it. Want to try it on, Yeti? <laughs> want your life jacket? Hey, you want it? Want to try it on? No. We'll save it. A pair of hiking boots. When you go canoeing, there's going to be a lot of difficult portages. Unless you're not doing any portages, you're just going and you're moving to one lake. You definitely don't need boots. You can use your sandals or whatever. But if you're doing portages, you know, two meters to two kilometers, the last thing you want to do is twist your ankle. So I would definitely recommend getting yourself a good pair of hiking boots. And uh, that would save you from injury and uh, having your wife carry you out. <laughs> so... Uh, hiking boots definitely get so that is my gear so what I'm gonna do right now like I said there's a lot of things that I went through kind of there's a lot here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything out that I'm not breaking 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 <laughs> bringing and uh, you'll have the difference in size maybe I'll throw everything in the slot bag so you have an idea how much room that's gonna take okay so my wife was kind enough to put everything on and display how she's been carrying the backpack in the uh, cooler in the front so this is what we do um, works really well and uh, yeah so we are the type of people that like doing our trips in one shot so this helps us out I mean you don't see your toes but you just gotta watch your step and uh, yeah this has been working very well for us and we'll continue doing that so there we go this is the Front pack, back pack method. That makes sense? I don't know, but that's what we do. Right on. And now, I'll come down to over here. So after taking out all the gear that we are not bringing, this is what we're left. I mean, a lot of these things are going to be in the slog bag. And the tent normally goes on my wife's back. On her backpack, we strap that to the bottom. And maybe a few other things that are going to be in her backpack and the rest goes into the slog bag so that's what i'll do now i'll take all these items throw them in my slog bag and then you'll kind of have an idea how much room uh that uh, we can put in that slog bag and uh we'll go from there so anyways i'll do that and i'll be right back okay right, so we've kind of packed everything i'm just going to throw everything in my slog bag quickly and then you'll have an idea of what it's going to look like. And that is everything in there. So now what you do is kind of fold that, take the arrow, put the panel on that. that like that and you just grab these I mean I'd probably do a little bit better there but just to show everyone and then I'm gonna pull these down clean that up there you go that's my slug bag throw it on just to give me an idea and it's like that and it's pretty comfortable I do like this one you know, there's different options of you can get slug bags. You can get a, a 71, 70 liter, or 115, or even a 120, I think. But I do like this one. It's comfortable, works well. I have to give this a weight. 50, 60 pounds in there probably. I could be way off, I have no idea, but that's what I'm guessing. And there you go. And my wife's bag would have the rest, so she would have the uh, tent at the bottom. Uh, sleeping bags. What else? Clothes. Clothes map and maybe have uh so we'd probably be wearing our boots but we'd bring sandals she'd have sandals hanging from her bag or crops. and then our and i have the water and the water yeah so we want the water near bear spray right here water uh filter i think i put that in my bag so i'd probably change that i'd probably put the filter in her bag to make it easy also and uh that's pretty much it so uh if you like this video please uh, hit that like button and don't forget to uh, pack that subscribe button. 
weighs nothing. And uh, yeah, that's it. And please let me know. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video. If uh, there was things that uh, I could do better, I am kind of working on it. So please let me know. Uh, if it's too long, I can fix that. And uh, also make comments. If you see things that I could bring to make my life a little easier. Actually, there's one thing I'm going to add to my list is the bush buddy or the solo stove. I think I'm going to try the solo stove. And uh, I think that would be a good little purchase and maybe... Um, eliminate the, the, the fuel one. Yeah, eliminate the fuel one. So anyways, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.